Isn't that field lovely? We're having a barbecue there soon. Where do you want to go? The fast way or the slow way? Fast way is left, slow way is right. I'm late, I've got to go the fast way. If you'd listen to any of these videos, you'd know that I'm always late. One windscreen win, uh, window uh, review mirror retractor. So, how have you been anyway? All right, it's lovely. It's the summer. Look, oh, it's lovely. I hope you're well. I'm very well. My daughter went on a thing called the Cambridge healthy eating plan or something, don't call it the diet anymore. That used to be the one where they encouraged you to uh, eat zero carbohydrates. But um, that, was, uh, that was extreme, We're pushing you over into ketosis the whole time. So uh, people were getting kidney stones and stuff apparently. So anyway, they've uh, rebranded it and now what they do is they do uh, three 200 calorie meals. So porridge, shake and soup. So that's 600 calories. Each one contains one third of your daily vitamin and mineral intake. So really that's you done with the vitamins and minerals for the day and that means you can eat 400 calories of what the hell you like. <coughs> Making up a thousand. Which you might think is just like a stupidly low number of calories but in fact it is, it's not the end of the world you know. I mean, I can lose calories, I can lose weight on 1,700 calories a day, and I'm now probably allowing for the odd bit of cheese I eat that I shouldn't, probably on 1,000 to 1,200 max. So, I'm, and I'm gonna lose weight on that, you know, even with the cheese, so. And it's working quite well. I've lost uh, 10 kilos, so. You'll probably see a bit of difference in my shape of my face. It's got a bit less, a bit more oval, a bit less round. Anyway, but that actually wasn't what I was going to talk about because I've had COVID. That's another thing. I'm having my teeth fixed. I've got a very good dentist, and he's busy doing a good technical work on my teeth, which is what I want. I'm prepared to put up with a bit of, uh, you know. Less, uh, how can I put it? Well, the, the way that my surgery works is that I'm not a lecturer in restorative dentistry at King's, but I am, but we do know how to treat patients um, privately. So we, you know, we are, we've got all the experience uh, dealing with people who come in who've got a particular problem and need a solution. And, not too worried about the cost because they're, they're, they're looking for a solution that possibly up to now they've not been able to find anywhere else. And so, right, turning left, squeeze through here. He's turning left, so out we go. Wait, mirror. Yeah, so he's very, uh, how can I put it, he's very accurate, technically, which considering that, as I say, he's a lecturer in restorative dentistry, I would hope that he would be, but he's the practice COVID lead, and this practice that I go to, they're like, uh, very hot, it's like, they're still in the depths of COVID, there's still, there's still corpses in the streets outside, you would think judging by the, their attitude to COVID. It's very much a sign on the door. I mean, some shops and, and offices have signs on the door that say, you must please well wear a mask when you're on these premises. But they're usually, they're just left over from when they used to be on the door and they put them on in sticky labels that they don't want to peel off because it'll peel all the paint off. 
But these guys, no, they want you to wear a mask and everyone's still wearing masks and all the patients are wearing masks and uh, staff are wearing masks and when you go in, if you haven't got a mask on, they're like, would you mind putting a mask on, please? And, and that's their idea of uh, voluntary. When I said to him, like, like, are you still wearing masks and everything? He said, yeah, well, he said, it, it's voluntary, but well, obviously we'd prefer it if you did, but it is voluntary. And I'm like, well, shouting at somebody as soon as they walk in the door, would you mind putting a mask on, please? That is not voluntary, okay? That is not voluntary. That's not how we would treat voluntary. Our, our, we have the opposite approach. When someone comes in with a mask on, we say, look, you don't need to wear that if you don't want to. If you want to take it off, feel free. And so, and 10 times out of 10, they say, oh, okay, I wasn't sure, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, honestly, here, it's not, we're not that bothered, you know. So, to which you'll reply, well, I'm not surprised you got COVID angry. I'm not surprised. And the answer to that is, I didn't catch it through work. I caught it off a member of my family. And COVID means so many things to so many people, you know, there were so many variants and everything. There's the BA5, BA4 variants going around at the moment, but I don't know which one we had, me and Mrs. Angry. But um, just to give you like a quick run through of what it's like, actually like to have COVID, right? And then bearing in mind that I'm in a, I'm in a high risk group, I'm over 60, I'm overweight, um, and uh, my lungs are not particularly brilliant, although I've never smoked or anything, but what happens is uh, the first thing that you get is you get like a ringing in your ears. So, which sounds weird, but you know that sort of uh, thing you get when you've got a cold, or that is like, and you just move your head and you get like a ringing. Well, that was the first symptom. And then what was the second symptom was they, they then sort of started coming on fairly thick and fast after that. And there must be like 12 symptoms. So for example, then the next thing that happens is you get very cold. So you're sitting there thinking, I'm coming down with something. I've got like this funny ringing in my ears and all of a sudden I feel chilly. And it's like a, a, a portent of doom. You know, like when you're gonna catch something and you're like, you think to yourself, did I just, do I feel this, do I, is this what I'm feeling or is it just, you know, if I'm, I'm sitting in a draft and then you think, no, this is, um, this is it, mate. I'm, 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 I'm on the menu for something here. So you get the, the chills and then you want to go to bed because you feel uh, not well. So you, so you go and wrap yourself up in the duvet and then um, you go and get another duvet to put on top or a couple of blankets or something. And then that night, your temperature shoots up to about 38 and a half, and all of a sudden you're hot. So you're like, you're, you're in bed, and you don't really want to take the covers off, but you're feverish, you're sweating. Then you get uh, aches all over, your bones ache all over. It's like you've got rheumatoid arthritis everywhere. And then, you get a headache as well, headache, for two or three days. So there you are, you're cold, you're sweating, you ache, you've got a headache, you're tired, you want to go to bed and sleep. And so you sleep in the day, no trouble at all, for four hours and then you wake up, then you go downstairs and you try and watch a bit of telly or something and then after about two, three hours you think to yourself, do you know what, I could go back to sleep again. I'm just really tired. And so, you go through about two or three days of that, sleeping every four hours. So sometimes you're up in the middle of the night, sometimes you're asleep all through the middle of the day. You know, it's just, you just gotta roll with it, you know, just gotta go with it. If you take things like, uh, you might think, well, I'm gonna take a day nurse or something, because it's like flu-like symptoms. Uh, fever and uh, uh, elevated temperature and achy bones and stuff like that and you think well I'll I'll take a day nurse but in fact I took day nurse and it really honestly didn't make any difference you're far better off just um, taking paracetamol 
So I would, if you've got a friend who could get you some paracetamol, just get some paracetamol in. Yes. And then, all this time, you'll be testing negative for COVID, right? Because the way it works is all back to front. The most normal diseases, you're infectious, so you're shedding the virus, but you're not, you're asymptomatic, so you don't know you've got anything. And that's how the virus works. It, uh, it works by spreading at a time when you, you honestly don't know you're ill. And then all of a sudden you're ill, and then you go to bed and stay away from everybody, but by then you've infected everybody, right? That's, the, that's what we're used to, isn't it? That's the standard model. But uh, COVID works the other way around, which is that you don't test positive. So presumably you're not shedding viruses all the time you're sick. <coughs> so, so that's why you have to take a certain leap of faith and understand that you've got COVID from all these symptoms, even though you're testing negative. And then like the first day or the day after the first day that you feel really okay again and you think, oh, I'm okay, I'm, I could probably go to work. Um, that's when your tests start coming back positive. Bear in your mind, just to put this in context, a half a million people caught this new strain last week. So, I mean, I wasn't alone. Um, so what happens is then you're, you're like you're normal like I am now but I'm still testing positive so I'm still shedding viruses so I'm still saying uh, and the, the, the rule at the moment is you've got five uh, you have to stay off away from people for five days um, and then you can just go about your life as normal which I think is just the weirdest thing because basically you're not going to start testing positive till about day three or four or five so just when you're uh, shedding viruses, because as I say, it's a back to front virus, it sort of relies on you feeling better again and thinking that you're not going to infect anybody and then going back to work, and that's when you infect everybody. So this five day rule is dumb. Anyway, I'm going to the dentist at the end of the week. Can I ring him up? Because this bloke's lead Mr. COVID, you know, Mr. Viral Apocalypse. and. I said to them, because I thought he's going to be annoyed, you know, because me and him, I'm like to him, why are you still doing all this? And the nurses are saying, yeah, we've told him he can stop all this now. And he's like, you know how many people are getting COVID every week? <coughs> and I'm thinking, yeah, but not through the dental surgery, which is correct, because I, no, that's in the end, that isn't how I caught it. And then, you know, you've got this sort of really weird um, conundrum whereby if you're taking universal precautions and you believe that they work then you shouldn't really be worried but if you're taking universal precautions and you really believe that they don't work then what the hell are you doing taking universal precautions for if they're not universal do you know what I mean you have to trust trust in your system and not just say well this system is entirely for show which is what it seems to be you know, and which in a way, to be honest with you, is always, what it always has been. Because in the early days of HIV, um, they were like, oh, well, we, uh, well, we've got this universal precaution system. But in the, uh, in the event, in the unlikely event that you find out that one of your patients is HIV positive, then um, you've got to take a ton more precautions. And they would say, oh, no, it's out of an abundance of caution. Whereas in fact it's not. It's because they didn't trust the basic precautions to work. And when I, and I say you're, you're lucky to find out because in those days um, uh, the patients didn't have to tell the dentist they were HIV positive. And the, um, this was to prevent um, homophobic discrimination and, and them being refused dental treatment. Although to, to the best of my knowledge I never ever ever heard of anywhere in the world a dentist refusing to uh, see a patient because he was HIV positive. It just wouldn't be logical. I mean, HIV is not even as infectious as hepatitis and we never used to refuse patients on the grounds of hepatitis, so why would we refuse them on the grounds of HIV? 
but then the doctors weren't allowed to tell us and if we wrote to the doctors and said what's his patient's medical history then they didn't have to tell us I mean, and it was absolutely outrageous and another yet another egregious example of where the British Dental Association let the profession down you know because if that patient had gone in for orthopedic surgery if they'd broken their leg or you know they'd had their a plate put or you know, any sort of surgery involving blood and an open wound then that surgeon would have been entitled to have known the HIV status of the patient but because we're dentists and you know that's all we are and we're just doing uh, surgery that involves bone and blood and everything as well although it happens to be surgical extraction of teeth and stuff like that but apparently we're not worthy of being told and that still rankles after 40 years but um, I thought no I I'm not going to this guy's paranoid about Covid I'm not going to just go in and well, after he's got me numb just casual drop this bomb that oh by the way I had Covid last week and, and uh, although technically five days have passed and I am, you know, uh, the government says that I'm okay to go out and about, um, but I'm still testing positive, so I presume I'm still shedding viruses. So, uh, you know, watch out. Um, and, 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 and again, bearing in mind that with um, COVID, you know, if you find out that someone is, um, covid positive then universal precautions all of a sudden don't start to work you know that all of a sudden you then have to put on another another gown and another mask and whatever so there's no you know this the whole thing is just ppe theater that's what it's all about it's all about reassuring everybody that you know as much as possible is being done to keep them safe in an environment where nobody can guarantee anybody's is safe and the fact that 500,000 people caught COVID this week bearing in mind that most of us are on our fourth jab and some of us are on our fifth um, and, the, and that we're all um, you know totally socially distanced and it's the summer <coughs> excuse me and we're all uh, we're all masked up and everything and yet you know it's an absolute fact of life if you are going to get this thing you're going to get it and you are going to get it everyone's going to get it okay everyone this thing is a virus it's not we're not capable of um halting this thing we've had uh we've had to put out with viruses ever since we were bacteria So we're not going to sort of suddenly uh, master them now. Anyway, so I'm fine now. So, but I'm I'm not. I'm only testing myself every couple of days because they cost uh, two, three pounds a head now. These tests they don't give them away for nothing anymore. And. Uh, so I rang up the surgery and I said, like, I was tested COVID last, positive last Tuesday and I've got an appointment this Thursday. Uh, what do you think? And they're like, oh no, that's five days. You're all right. I'm like, you know, really? I, I, said, no, I said, I'm still testing positive. I said, I've tested positive last Tuesday and I'm still testing positive today. But it's more than five days. So we're oh, well, no, that's all right. As long as it's past the number five. The number five has got magical powers. That means, number five, means that all the viruses that you're shedding now aren't infectious and not going to cause any trouble. All right, well, believe me, if the most paranoid surgery in the country is going to go along with this government advice that after five days you can, you can emerge and start infecting people, then that's fine. It's no, not surprising that 500,000 people have got it, is it? If that's the advice. And the, and the actual condition, the actual situation on the ground is that everybody's, nobody's shedding viruses until after they've had it. And they certainly don't start shedding viruses until three to four days after they've got it. And they certainly haven't stopped shedding viruses five days after they tested positive for the first time. So, and could possibly do for two or three weeks. So, anyway, I'm gonna get my crown fitted. So. You know, and it's not like I'm going to get ill for him. Everybody in that practice is going to get ill for me.
right. Okay, so that's COVID for you. I hope you don't get it, but don't worry if you do. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.